everybody talking about when Carson Daly went to them Diddy parties. Because Carson Daly did go to them Diddy parties. No different than Ashton Kutcher. Damn. Okay. <laughs> no different than Hype Williams. Why don't nobody want to talk about Hype Williams? Usually, if I send a shout out to somebody, people start really kicking things up. But it's almost as if hype is like living under some wheat germ grass or some under Russell Simmons ass in Bali. Why can't, is it time to put Hype Williams on a milk car? Everyone that was not my color believed me. It was my people that needed convincing. If someone like the Diddler is your hero, then you should hurry up and go to hell with him. If someone like Jay-Z is your hero, then, you know, just be glad you're not talented so he can sacrifice you like he tried to do me and he succeeded with Aaliyah. Stevie J should be charged. Mary J. Blige should also be charged. Jennifer Lopez should definitely be charged. Jay-Z should be charged. Khaled should be charged. Rick Ross should be charged. Usher should be charged and tried with him. Off of Justin Bieber alone. Now, Carisha and Rick Ross just sat down together. At the yeah, I know. Two diddy do our bops. What a reunion. In one recent interview with Real Life Productions, she pulled back the whole circus on what happened at Diddy's white parties. And this is truly horrifying. People say they went to Diddy parties and they felt like something was off and decided to leave or they got invited to another room and they decided to go because they felt like it wasn't right or whatever the case may be. He's literally walking in there, not thinking. Seriously, like, but the thing is, they were still willing to take the chance to go because everybody's been hearing these whispers. Where is Tyson Beckford right now? And why is nobody talking about how after his stint at Russell Simmons and Diddy parties in the Hamptons, he went into pure addiction and now he's just disappeared. He's not acting. What is Tyson Beckford doing? He was one of the biggest figures in the modeling world. Matter of fact, we see a lot of supermodels that keep coming and going and coming and going. And there's just a few that stay. You know, a lot of people that end up at these wild parties and these wild ceremonies, because see, everyone's thinking, freak off, freak off, freak off. But what you're not thinking is ritualistic human sacrifice. Whether, you're, whether or not you're offering up your sexuality or offering up your life force, energy transfer. So for Whitney Houston to be unalive in that hotel room and for him to wait to start the party right as her spirit was completely leaving her says a lot. You know And Jack, what I was going to say was um and even in the Pierce Morgan um, interview, he was asking about what happens at these parties. Uh, you know, we've seen visual evidence to where, you know, again, Nature Boy is locked up for life. But he himself had visual evidence of him wanting to uh, take advantage of a woman or make love, whatever you want to call it, while other women are dancing in the ritualistic dance yes, around them. these are all like, spiritual you see seances. That? You gotta understand, these are practices that have been around long before they started choreographing society. We're talking about thousands and thousands of years. Things were happening here. It, it wasn't until the past 500 years that the world has gotten caught up into such wild, like like nothing. Oh no, that's not real. That's fake. That's not real. Programming though, they started giving Very much us so. yeah. MK Ultra cloning, whether they're cloning consciousness or literally cloning physical body, and now we know they're capable of doing both. That's right, that's how deep this all goes a guest at one of Diddy's parties recently shared some behind-the-scenes details adult star Sienna Grace recounted her experience attending a birthday celebration at Diddy's mansion offering some insight into the atmosphere and how the music mogul 
interacted with his guests, Sienna revealed that she was invited to Christian Diddy's 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 son birthday bash, and although the gathering was small and intimate, she recognized several notable faces among the attendees were French Montana Jordan Woods, Stassi best friend of Kylie Jenner, and a few guys from Bad Boy Records. During the event, Diddy made an appearance to bring out his son's birthday cake, but according to Sienna, he didn't seem fully present and mostly kept to himself. Sienna also shared some insights into the signals used by Hollywood stars when they're interested in someone. According to her, these celebrities often make it clear when they've picked someone for the night by giving them something like a jacket or a jumper to mark them as off-limits to others. James Crew and RPS always been Diddy's especially hard for Pierre. That's why he's being sued right now, too, by one of his assistants and stuff like that, because I guess he learned from his boss. But James Cruz used to work for 50, but he worked for Diddy first. So the mix was always scum buckets, man. Right, right. But speaking of Harvey Pierre, how do you feel about him getting accused of sexual assault? Uh, like I said, anything that has to do with those sexual, those people have to prove that. But is it, are they capable? Yeah, they're capable. Look at the atmosphere. They in the music industry, they in the music business. They set up those type of, uh, uh, they, they learn the tricks of the trade. Fast. Guys don't put those pills that they get to the girls in the champagne bottles because they popping them in front of them. Most of those girls, especially if they like mixed drinks, you understand, they see the bottles when they open them. And they trying to keep their eyes on them because they don't want to get no kind of drugs put in their system. But what they don't understand is in the orange juice and it's in the cranberry juice. Those girls who like the mixed drinks, you understand what I'm saying? They gonna pull their own sexual act because they don't understand it ain't in the bottles, it's in the juice. Those guys, they learn that and they put it to those girls who don't know no better. But before this interview, you was telling me that a female reached out to you about a sex tape? Yeah. It, it, I, it may not have been a year ago, it may have been close to a year, nine months like that a year. I don't, it wasn't, it was, it was about, I don't know, was it, was it a year? It's, it's six months to a year, I, 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 I forget about it because we just had a brief conversation for about like a week or so, you know, like, I mean like, she'll call me one day and then we'll talk a little bit, then I'll get back with her, then she'll call me back. She was trying to find out information and everything like that. But I really couldn't help her, bro. You understand? And then she told me the guy's name. You know, she said, Gene, I know it wasn't you. You know, she told me her credentials. She said, Gene, I went to college. You know, I come from a reptile family. I live in, you know, out your way where you at. And she said that, um, do I know this bodyguard name, Big Joe? And I said, uh, wow, what's going on? And then she told me about that she had heard about this tape floating around uh, Puffy uh, XA and her, sexual assault her. And I was like, wow. And I couldn't say anything because I know I know the parties and stuff like that. But I told her, I said, yo, I don't, I, don't, I can't give you Joe's number, but I'll get in touch with him or whatever best way I could. So, um, I got in touch with Joe and I told him what the lady said. And he just said that she was, she, you know, she didn't know anything about it. And that, it, you know, it was felonious. So then the lady had told me she didn't want Joe. She just wanted a copy of the tape so she could bring charges up on Puff. So I said to her, uh, he said that there's no tapes exist. That tape doesn't exist. You understand? So, I gave her that information. I let Joe know. I let her know. And that was basically it. Do you believe the tape exists? What I believe and what I know is two different things. I was told when this is word around town that the tape exists. I never saw the tape. 
I never, I never, you know, know anybody who say they saw the tape. See, what happens is that, man, when you have a certain status uh, in Harlem, you are privy to a lot of information, or you're privy to stuff that happens in the street. And there was information in the streets that a tape like that existed. How true it was, I don't know, because I don't look for that stuff. I'm not trying to find them. And that's what it was. What's on the tape? I heard it was enough on the tape that people could blackmail Puff for. That's what I actually heard. In fact, the Thalia Graves case is something something that people really need to be aware of because it seems Diddy has been blackmailing her with a tape of her. What parties are the hottest ticket around? They won't even give me a permit for the parties, man. They don't want me to do the parties no more. We, we ain't gonna stop. We gonna keep on having fun, bringing people together from all walks of life. We gonna hear about my party. They gonna be shutting them down. They gonna probably be arresting me, doing all types of crazy things just because we wanna have a good time. You know, whenever you bring up a different element into people's environment, things that broaden people's around, people get intimidated. There's a lot of people out there that feel intimidated by it. It ain't nothing but, but, but break it down racial barriers, break it down generation barriers. People from all walks of life. Ron Perlman talking to Jay-Z, Jay-Z talking to, you know what I'm saying? It just goes on and on, you know? It's just, it's just like people from all walks of life connecting and getting together. Yeah. Your parties are the hottest ticket in town. Mm -hmm. People dying to get into your party. How does that make you feel? I mean, it's cool. You know, it doesn't make me feel any way special. It doesn't make me feel like a bigger person. It just, it just makes me feel like I know how to throw a party. What you need to do, um, women, beautiful women, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Um, beautiful women. Beautiful men for the ladies, of course. Um, Wouldn't it be better if there weren't beautiful men there? There were just a lot of beautiful women and then just the guy? No, 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 you have to, you have to make, there's enough ladies to go around to make the, make them, the ladies, give the ladies what they need too, you know, you have to take care of your women. Take care of the ladies, okay, ladies, gotcha. Yeah. That's yeah. good. Can't, can't force the situation. Right, right. What about, can't force a square peg into a round hole? That's the story of my life, huh? <laughs> Okay, you need that. I wish you had told me that a long time ago. Well, I'm here now, brother, it's not too late. What about, what about, like, celebrities? You, you have a lot of celebrities okay, in here. Okay, you have to listen, I'm giving you the, the menu, okay? Let's just take things slow, okay? Okay. It's all right. It's a... He's learning. He's learning. He's learning. And I'm slow. Yes, yes. Check I'm it very out. slow. Check it out. Check this is my man. We go way back. He hasn't told y'all that. We're going to talk about that later. We go way back. Way back. But check this out. When was that, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> we'll go get to that later. All right. Okay. Now, <laughs> we need um alcohol. Right. Alcohols. Right. Not just one alcohol. Alcohols. Right. Just water. different blend. You need blend. the ladies. You need the booze. You need um some water. <laughs> For watering plants? What? And the answer just got worse. No, no, I don't know if you guys have noticed this. Like, a lot of ladies drink water at parties. They right. Just, you know, so you have, if you don't have what they need, they're going to leave. Right. Got to right. keep them there. Right. You need, you need locks on the doors. Yeah. Okay, this but, is sounding kind of dangerous now. It's a little kinky, but yeah, you know, yeah. broccoli, but just right. check it out. You need um, a lot of heat. A lot heat. of heat. Yeah. Heat. You mean that physically the place has to be hot? You don't have no air conditioning. No air conditioning. No. Why is that? Heat affects the alcohol and it also affects like, um, you know, everybody gets a little bit more comfortable and loose. Builds up a nice little sweat. That just sounds disgusting. What are you doing? <laughs> Depends on the way you look at it. So who was with you this weekend? A bunch of my friends. Diddy, Quincy, Justin Bieber. Oh, so far, French so Montana. <laughs> Do you know half the people you're naming? No. She didn't go to bed. I haven't been to bed yet. You haven't? I, I want to be Clay when I grow up, Court. I got on a plane at 5.30 a.m. for this party. I think half the people there were butt naked. You would have loved it. Many celebrities have shared their experiences at Diddy's legendary parties, but the details surrounding his alleged freak-offs remain largely unknown in a 1999 interview with Entertainment Tonight. Diddy himself seemed aware of the buzz his parties would create. You don't mind me asking, because I know the topic is sensitive. What happened to Usher? I heard about some music executive from the industry back in Harlem. You know, I heard it from some music executives back in Harlem and I'm not gonna speak on their name. They doing uh, programs and everything like that. And they may be doing some, they may speak on it themselves. But I heard it from some music executives. Where did you hear it? Bro, you know, you know how people be talking and we was around some people, something like that. And then some people might say, yo, 
I don't F with that dude. And I, at the time, I didn't know who the F Usher was. You know what I'm saying? It was one of those type of situations. And when father say, yo, man, I don't F with them niggas. Man, I'm getting out that industry and everything like that. You know, you know, Puff sent this little kid to the hospital. How he sent him to the hospital? Man, Nick was bleeding from the butt. And that's what was said. But I didn't even have a name for the kid at the time. Then you heard, and that's what happened. And that's just, you know, that's something that you heard. You don't know if it's true, you just heard it. So, and just to hear this, and this new thing where they saying that they got kids coming forward and saying that he did that, I, I don't know, man, that's just crazy. And like I just said, you know, that's just something that I heard. It's something that I didn't know. It's something that I ain't seen. But it's all because of his mentors and the people that trained him and taught him the music business. You know, it's all about the people who trained and taught him the music business. Because Puff wasn't, um, uh, uh, he wasn't born a monster. You know what I'm saying? He was made into a monster, brother. Do you understand what I'm saying? He was made into a monster from the stuff that happened to him, the things that he had to do, you understand? The things that he had to do to become who he is, you know what I'm saying? You know, it's like this, brother. You never like something so much that you can't do without, and you never be willing to do anything to get where you wanna be at. You gotta have principles, you gotta have morals, you gotta keep with that stuff. And in that music business, a lot of that stuff get thrown out the window. You understand? And that's what happened to him. He started doing the things to other people that was done to him. To keep it frank, he was doing the things to other people that was done to him. And it is what it is. You got to know better. And if you know better, you will do better. When he was in New York City, he was like that gecko from the Geico commercial. Then he turned and start uh, going, when he lived in Cali and Miami, he turned into Godzilla. I would see him talk about how he using, he was never like that. Smoking cigarettes, smoking weed and everything like that. He turned into something that you could consider a monster, bro. Then he started doing things to people. You understand that he learned. That's the learned behavior, bro. Over the years, several well-known figures have opened up about their experiences at Diddy's parties Ashton Kutcher revealed during a 2019 Hot Ones interview that he had some wild memories from Diddy's gatherings, but he chose to stay tight-lipped. It's so difficult to reflect on the darkest times in your life. But sometimes you gotta do that. I was I mean, I hit rock bottom, but I make no excuses. My behavior on that video is inexcusable. I take full responsibility for my actions in that video. Disgusted. I was disgusted then when I did it, I'm disgusted now. I went and I sought out professional help. I had to go into therapy or go into rehab. I had to ask God for his mercy and grace. so sorry, but I'm committed to be a better man each and every day. I'm not asking for forgiveness. I'm truly sorry. You think Diddy can come back from this? Because a lot of people say it's over for him. Oh, it is over for him. Come back to work. To be in the entertainment business? Listen to me, man. And I don't want to bring this guy's story up because it's old. And I know he's trying to live past it, but I'm gonna bring it up anyway. Ray Rice, his wife, spit in his face. And he did what he did on that elevator. He ain't played one football game after that. Nowhere that I know of. He may have went overseas and played or something like that. I don't know that to be true. But he didn't play in the NFL, a hell of a running back. He ain't played not one down in the NFL after that. No endorsements, nobody's gonna have anything to do with old boy. 
And when they come out with this other stuff, he gonna come back to work. I won't. I wouldn't be surprised if he do the ultimate sin. It's and he, because, bro, he's so he's such a narcissistic that he couldn't stand not being somewhere and not being seen. His whole life, his whole career was about him being seen in the public. It was about him, you know, taking everybody else's dreams and making them his. And now, him nor his kids would profit from anything from Bad Boy or Sean Puppy Combs again. His kids is gonna suffer behind this. Wow, oh, man, that's crazy to hear, man. And you know and Diddy, you think it's a good chance about taking his life. He was talking about taking his life at the City College thing. Yo, D Ferg, ASAP Ferg father, say, yo, man, we gotta watch him, man. This nigga talking about killing himself. I say, so let him. If you that weak, I said, let him. And you think, Eugene, why you said it? I said, man, listen to me, man. He ain't no good to nobody if he talking about hurting himself. His life don't belong to him. His life belong to God. What he should be trying to do right now is work his way towards God now, for real. And not that devil he been worshiping. That those people got him believing, you understand? That's the true God. Because everything from what I know, since I've been around him, you know, everything that's going forward has been that of the devil. The, the alcohol, the partying, everything has been of the devil. And he's been leading not only himself, our people, into some kind of damnation through his actions. I don't think anybody came out defending Diddy. All these celebrity friends he have, and nobody came out. They brand. It's all about the money. They saw what he did to Cassie. With the kicking, the punching. They saw what they did to Cassie. They know did nobody in America like that. So now, these people are represented by a brand whether it's something about the music, clothing, movies. They not gonna come out and speak on nothing that has anything to do with them. And they praying that they not on the tape doing crazy stuff, being oiled up in the whole nine yards. They praying. So until the feds say, hey, yo, listen here. <laughs> uh -oh. We got you on, hey buddy, we got you on this tape and uh, the girl looked like she was pretty young. We're not gonna, sh we're not gonna show it, but uh, we need you to come and testify against Brother Love, P. Diddy, Puff Daddy, you know, Sean Combs. That's when they're gonna start talking and they're not gonna be talking in this favor. When the feds come to them and show them what they got on tape, Cause if he had 250 tapes all over the, 250 cameras all over the house, somebody got caught stealing a cookie out the cookie jar. It could be your favorite pastor. It could be your favorite politician. But they didn't think they was being watched and Brother Love was watching. Yeah, I mean, T.D. Jakes, he hasn't even came out and said anything. And him and Diddy was real cool. Hey, Amen. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, man. And I and I know the people in the congregation over there is shaking in their boots because this man then led them probably allegedly, allegedly, probably led them to damnation because those people's hearts are gonna be broken if that man is seen on those tapes doing anything. Because people always put their faith in the pastor instead of putting their faith in God. And what they need to do is understand that he's just a man. And he has a history. 
not looking too good for him. So you feel like celebs are worried that they might be on too? Oh, they know. That's why they ain't speaking up or saying nothing. Yeah, I was at the daddy party, but I know I ain't do nothing. Uh, when you don't know somebody's taping you, when you don't know that somebody is videoing you in some kind of form or fashion, you and you got that alcohol, you got the in you, they're a little loose, bro. They let down all their inhibitions. The music is pumping. He said it himself. He got it so hot in there that you got to take your clothes off. He said that himself, bro. So a lot of them, like, like, whoa, 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 what he said? I think a lot of them was being swallowed. Have you ever been swallowed? <laughs> they tell off on themselves all the time, man. You just got to listen. But why do you think Diddy had all them hidden cameras? Bro, when you that powerful, you didn't get that powerful without having one or two or maybe three ups on somebody. Diddy always been the type of individual that wanted to have ups on the next person no matter what they was doing. Like, he always played artists against each other. He did it to Big, he did it to Craig Mack. You understand? I said before, he did the stuff to Ja Rule. You know what I'm saying? So he had ups on Ja Rule so he could go after Jay-Z. You understand what I'm saying? So he always played those time kind of up games on people. So to have those cameras and know what he was doing, is gonna give him the ups on everybody who came to that party. Even your favorite basketball player. There ain't no party like a Diddy party. We know who said that. He may be one of the persons who got caught up in the Diddy party. LeBron said that, but yeah, you might be right. You know, it sounds like you had all them hidden cameras to use it against I think that was said in the indictment, right? That, that, that was said in the indictment. You know, somebody, I think Dawn may have said that. I don't, I don't, I don't know for sure, and correct me if I'm wrong. He would, even if you didn't want to do something, he would tell an individual, well, I got you on tape doing it before. Usher offered a more personal perspective recalling his time living with Diddy when he was a teen tier during a 2016 interview on The Howard Stern Show. Usher said the experience was pretty wild, but admitted that he didn't fully understand everything going on around him when asked if he would let. His own kids attend one of Diddy's parties. Usher firmly replied, hell no, and that is for good reason because he has allegedly been groomed by Diddy. 